So it's up to you how rigorously you want to pay attention to the three-act structure, if at all. Uh, it's good to be aware of it, and if the if your story, if your novel really starts to falter, then maybe that's the point you take a look at the structure and make sure you didn't go too far off the deep end and 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 get it to a point where it can't be salvaged under your method, and you need to structure it more. But what I'm getting to is, if anything, if you're going to structure anything, I would begin with a situation. Just begin with a situation and then try to resolve it as the novel goes on and let other things play into it. And you, you can break down most great novels and there's a very simple situation. When, when, when it really comes down to a very simple inciting situation, not even the inc inciting incident as in the three-act structure, but just a situation. You throw a situation out there and you let it happen. And I think that's what writers like Stephen King and Elmore Leonard would do, Donald Westlake, the great ones. Just come up with it with a situation. Donald Westlake had a had a a thing where um uh what if a character uh was applying for a job, a very specialized job, and there were only four other people in the country uh, equally qualified to apply for that job? <laughs> How would he handle that? And he ends up handling it in, in a in, in a pretty dastardly way. Uh, but you could it could go a lot of different different ways. Uh, you can have a simple situation. What if a woman is on her nightly walk in San Francisco and she thinks she sees a figure in the distance falling off a building? That may or may not, may not mean anything, but that's it's sort of a what if. Um, <clears throat> what if, uh, you know, Jim's Jim and Mary's doorbell rings at four in the morning unexpectedly? Um, what if what if a guy sets up an internet dating situation, travels halfway the, halfway across the country to meet the woman, and it turns out she gave him a fake photo of herself? Uh, these uh, you know some of these might be better for short stories, etc. But basically, when you you know you think about the the ba the, the the general what ifs. I mean, what if a boy strives for adventure and escape on the Mississippi River. That's Huckleberry Finn, basically, right? So um, anyway, we'll take a look. These are some examples of what ifs and uh, and see what you think. But um, I've tried to basically condense them into, into you know, some of these novels, some well-known, some not well-known into, into one sentence. And um, it does give you something to think about. That uh, if uh, and and a actually, if you develop one, if you're, you're walking around or just in, in daily life, or sometimes you know, wake up in the middle of the night, you have an idea, write them down because each one could be a novel. At the very least, they could be a short story, but they they could all be novels. Just what if? If it's a compelling what if, write that thing down and 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 file that away and 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 bring it out when when you can. Okay. Okay, these are kind of fun, these what-ifs. And to reiterate, most novels, especially good established novels, boil down to a situation, often a very simple situation. The novel might seem complicated. There's plots and subplots, and they're traveling around the world and different locations and there's sub characters and there's there's incidents throughout the novel that open and close etc but if you really break it down and strip it all away most novels stem from a very simple situation the easiest way to come up with an idea i believe is to see if it works into the what if you maybe you have an idea floating around apply what if to it and see if it works. See if it sounds good. See if it sounds like something that if somebody else told you about, you'd be interested in um, in following up with and, and, and learning about. It, you know, seeing what happens. If you'd ask questions about it, if you'd ask any, if, if somebody mentioned one of these things to you, and you'd ask, you'd be tempted to ask follow up questions. You, you have a starting point. That might be a pretty good idea for a novel right there.
Obviously, there are other factors that go into it, but this is, I think, what it boils down to. And if I was going to pick any any kind of rule or guideline to adhere to, be the the three act structure, the all the rules of writing that we laid down earlier, Elmore Leonard, and then the other twenty one. But between all that stuff, I think I, you know, if I was going to pick one thing, one way to handle developing my novel, I think I'd just use this. What if? <clears throat> See if it works. So with that said, here are some examples of books, most of which are well-known, or a lot of which are well-known, stripped down to the, to the one what-if sentence that propels them forward. <clears throat> what if a young mother and her son became trapped in their stalled car by a rabid dog? <clears throat> Simple setup, but Stephen King, again, probably goes about 600 pages on this. Cujo. An alien falls to planet Earth, meets a group of boys that learn to love and appreciate him. That's essentially E.T., isn't it? I don't know how much more complicated you can make E.T. than that. That's what it boils down to. And that's... Again, that's the incitement. That's what starts off. That's what kicks it off. And that's what the, 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 the movie and the book you know, work toward. Developing that. What if a man discovers he can travel through time and stop Lee Harvey Oswald from assassinating Kennedy? Assassinating. That's <laughs> spelled wrong there. Sorry. But... um. What, what if that's the case? Um, and that is Stephen King's book, 112263, which I enjoyed. I thought he got a little long-winded when the guy moves to Texas and lives and he's, he's kind of biding time there in the months before um, the, the, the Kennedy assassination was going to happen. So maybe in early 1963, he's living in a small town, he's getting ready, but he's teaching high school in a small town. That part was interesting. I thought I'd get a little long winded though with that stuff. Um, but in any case, it would, you know, you still, it was enough to keep you going. And, and, um, it's a very interesting premise. The, a man actually first discovers that he can time travel. He, there's a hole in a diner, I believe, in, in a small town in Maine in the basement. And somehow there's a portal there and they, he figures out he can time travel. And he, he tries it once and then it dawns, it comes back. Then it dawns on him, geez, I could go back. I could actually stop. I could change change history. I could stop Oswald, just block him, get in his way somehow, block him from assassinating Kennedy. But anyway, that's that simple sentence, and then you got a thousand-page novel. What if a used car has a personality? That's another Stephen King, Christine. I think the main character's friend two high school kids, a guy buys a used car and he sort of takes on this evil personality that the car has. But that could go a lot of different directions. Just that that opening, what if? Uh, you know, there's a lot of room there. Here's another king. What if a famous novelist gets injured and the nurse taking care of him doesn't like his writing? That's misery. Isn't that misery? She tortures the guy. Here's one not pertaining to a novel, but just a, a general thought uh, you could turn into something. What if someone's doorbell rings at four in the morning? You, you could have a whole mystery novel that starts with that. Someone's doorbell rings at four in the morning. The writer doesn't even know who it is, what it is. You just write it. You just sort of figure it out. Let it Let it fly. Uh, another one. What if someone gets a terminal diagnosis and decides to take a few people with them? That's actually my my first uh, novel in the series, but it doesn't matter. I was trying just trying to condense it for fun. I think that's it's as simple as that. Plenty of other things happen. There's complications. There's sub characters, subplots, but it all boils down to to that. Really, it stems from that. More classic now than my stuff. What if a captain wants revenge 
on the whale that bit off his leg. Moby Dick. That's all. That's that's the whole story of Moby Dick. What if a boy looking for freedom and adventure travels the Mississippi River? That's Huckleberry Finn. Those are probably two of the, those are probably the two consider the two greatest American novels. Moby Dick and Huck Finn. And look how simple the setup is. Just they both start with a what if. Here's another very incredibly simple one, also a classic novel. What if a family loses its farm and heads west? The Grapes of Wrath. Loses its farm in a drought. You can even put it that way. That's that's really what happened. But you can add that in. Just you start with the what if, and then you can add in the drought. You can add in from what state they they are and where they head west and all that. That's really not important. Just the what if. What if a wife goes missing and the husband is the prime suspect? Now that's from Gone Girl. To me, kind of a cheesy novel. It's a very common theme, but it it does apply to Gone Girl. Obviously, you have a you know seemingly very happy, well-to-do couple. Everything seems fine, and then all of a sudden the wife goes missing. And as is most often the case in those situations, the husband, until proven otherwise, is the prime suspect. But things develop from there, and they can develop a lot of different ways. What if an evil entity comes out of a sewer every 27 years in a small town? Now you're into horror fiction again, but that's It by Stephen King, which I did make it through years ago. It was a lot of work. That was a long one. Again, I think he had a little too much in there that didn't need to be there. But you can't argue with Stephen King. He's, he's a great entertainer. Here, to me, one of the great books, underrated books, James Dickey, and they made a really good movie out of it. What if four city dwellers decide to spend a weekend canoeing in rural Georgia? How about that? You got deliverance. That's all it is. You don't have to worry about what happens in the backwoods and they have a confrontation and they have to escape and Burt Reynolds ends up in the movie shooting a guy with a bow and arrow, all that stuff, and they have to pull it off at the end. They have to kind of fake it um, to get, try to get away with it. But again, that's all it is. Four city city guys going heading, down, heading sort of in rural Georgia to go down a canoe trip. What if a powerful Don's youngest son reluctantly joins the mafia? That's the Godfather. And I think that's it, probably the inciting incident. People say the Godfather, the inciting incident was when uh, uh, the Don gets shot. In the movie, it'd be Marlon Brando. <clears throat> but Don Corleone gets shot. And that starts this whole war. But I think the real inciting incident is when Michael, the son, the youngest son, who is a war hero and didn't want anything to do with the family business, he decides he's going to help his dad now. He, he can't help it now. He's going to step in. And then he ends up becoming the next Don. But when he when he tells his dad he's with him, it's okay. In the hospital, I believe that was it. It was a very powerful scene. I'm with you, Dad. It's okay. And that shift, I think, is really the inciting incident of that book. <clears throat> what if a guy tries to be a normal suburban family man while running his criminal organization? That's The Sopranos. That's all it is. Uh, to me, the, 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 one of the great series of all time, maybe not for everybody's taste, but I think it was the greatest TV series of all time, really. And uh, that's all it is. A guy tries to be a normal suburban family man while running his criminal operation. What if a mobster goes to Hollywood to collect a debt and accidentally gets into the film business? That's Get Shorty. That's actually the great Elmore Leonard. Not one of my favorites of Leonard. I, I prefer the ones, the old-fashioned ones, took place in Detroit, maybe maybe the ones in Florida. But it was this was certainly a popular book, and they made it into a movie. I think it was John Travolta. But again, that's all it is. He goes out there to collect a debt and somehow gets you know, unintentionally into the film business. <clears throat> what if a powerful white 
Wall Street executive makes a wrong turn in his car and hit and runs a black person in the Bronx. That's the bonfire of the vanities. Set off a whole chain of events. Very entertaining book, but that's that's how it started. And that that's what if. I'm sure that's exactly what Tom Wolfe thought of when he was formulating it. What if this what if that happened? Then what would happen? Would I have a novel? Would I have a good story? <clears throat> What if a woman on her nightly walk thinks she sees a figure fall off a building? I mean, that could be a mystery. It could be she's faulty. She's imagining something. It could be something supernatural. It could be somebody committing suicide. But it could be somebody getting thrown off a building, triggering a crime thriller. What if an internet dating situation goes haywire? Just that simple Line. It could go anywhere, anyway, but that's, you know, people people can relate to that. You meet somebody unknown, like a blind date, the modern version of a blind date, and, and it doesn't work out. It goes, something's wrong. Something goes wrong. What if a man is obsessed with a difficult neighbor? I mean, you could have a guy, his dream is to build an addition onto his house. And he wants to do it with his own two hands. He wants to do it just right. And that's the most important thing in his life, the most passionate thing. And, and all the neighbors have to, within a certain uh, distance, have to approve it. Everybody approves except for this one guy who just doesn't like to agree to anything. What's going to happen? What if the guy, and then, 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 then the guy that wants to build the, uh, the renovation, the addition, becomes obsessed with his neighbor? I mean, that, that'd be one storyline out of it. What if a commuter sees something shocking unfold in the backyard of a seemingly perfect couple's house? That's the girl on the train. I'm not a big fan of that one either because I think they stole, kind of stole the idea from Rear Window, the great Hitchcock movie, where uh, James Stewart's laid up. He's a photographer laid up with a broken leg. And so all he can do is sort of stare out the window and it's this sort of uh, community apartment complex. But bit by bit, he thinks he might have seen one of the neighbors a bit by bit murder his wife. And it becomes very dramatic. But um, in any case, that's, again, simple, simple start to the, the girl on the train. Here's one. What if a boy on his 11th birthday learns he is the orphan son of two powerful wizards? That's only Harry Potter. One, one of the mo most successful books and series of all time. But that's that's the what if. What if humans were colonized on planets 20,000 years in the future? Uh, I should say the future. But, there, but that's Dune. Frank Herbert, classic science fiction novel. And obviously it takes off and a million things happen. But that's the what if. Here's an old classic. What if a girl adopts a pig who is friends with a spider? Charlotte's Web. Classic Charlotte's Web. What if a pregnant woman is trying to track down the father of her unborn child? <clears throat> I mean, that's a common theme. That could happen. But this specific one, Light in August, great William Faulkner. Classic. And getting towards the end. What if two rookie newspaper reporters discover a botched burglary. That's all the president's men. And that actually was a, was a true story, but it was written like a novel. Um, and then it was made into a great movie, Robert Redford and uh, Dustin Hoffman, I believe. But again, they start off thinking they're, they're just got a typical routine story that day. There's a burglary and they're going to check it out. And I think Robert Redford... The Robert Redford character goes to court and is just sitting in this court, just a few people around thinking he's just going to see somebody plead guilty or innocent to a basic little robbery. And then all of a sudden uh, it looks, it, he sees that it might be a little bit more than that. It ends up being all the president's men. Uh, the whole Watergate scandal. And the final one, tremendous book. I love this writer, Larry McMurtry. What if two retired Texas Rangers 
launch a cattle drive from Texas to Montana. That's all it is. That's all it is. Uh, it's simple. You could even take jaws. We, we broke down jaws three act structure, but if you're going to, you, you could actually place jaws in, in there too. I'm realizing just say, what if you stuck three guys in a boat hunting for a, a dangerous shark? You know, I mean, that's, these things are not complicated. You can make them as complicated as you want once you get rolling. But the initial setup is not complicated. And that's why, uh, again, my opinion, if, you, if you're going to throw out any of it, uh, ignore any of it, I'd ignore the three-act structure. I'd ignore the rules before I'd ignore the what if. What if is critical. If, you're, if your what if works from the start, then you're off and rolling. And I want to see you finish that, uh, that novel.